What's up, everyone? Welcome to Cedar Point. We're here in May 2023 for our first visit of the year, and we're gonna take a look around the park, show you everything new, including the brand new boardwalk section. We're pretty excited. He's... I'm hungry right now, but I'll be excited. In a and we're gonna, bit. We can eat at the Grand Pavilion, replacing Wicked Twister, which should yeah. be awesome. Um... Let's go on in and check out those changes. So right here, before you get to the boardwalk section, they redid Johnny Rockets, so now it's an arcade. Let's see inside. Here's all the different arcade games that we're looking at. This is fun. Have you ever seen a mirror maze in a theme park before? Price 40 kronos? What no, currency credits. is that? Credits. Oh, I have more than 40 credits. And here we go. Here's our first look at the new boardwalk sign. Looks fantastic. So you still have the gatekeeper plaza right here, but that is where one of the Wicked Twister spikes would be, and obviously there's nothing there. But you have the giant wheel to the left, as well as Troika. The new Wild Mouse is down there. Troika sporting a brand new color scheme. Is looking sharp. Very like beach inspired. Calypso is back to its original name, still sporting some beautiful colors. Same location, right next to the giant wheel. You guys may remember, it used to be called Tiki Twirl, but before that, it was called Calypso, so it just goes back and forth. I'm sure in a couple years, they'll rename it back to Tiki Twirl. So as we work our way down the midway, we're now in the section of the boardwalk that is a lot different than it was before. So Matterhorn has been relocated to this section, as well as the classic Scrambler over here. And then we have the Wild Mouse, the brand new roller coaster here at Cedar Point. Just looking fantastic. I've heard it's actually a pretty good Wild Mouse. I've heard some people say maybe the best in the country. So I'm excited to give it a spin. Look at those riders going all the way around. Supposedly, if you sit off balance on this thing, you spin a lot. And what an entrance. That just looks fantastic. It's honestly a lot bigger than I was expecting. Right now, it says it's sporting about a 20 minute wait. This isn't too bad for the new roller coaster. Dispatching trains really fast. As soon as that one crests the lift, then the next one goes. And it's a moving loading platform, so just everything keeps on moving. This line has been moving really fast as well. Yeah, it's, it's so definitely a, a shorter ride experience, but overall I think they did a nice job. I, I like the, the audio as you're going up the lift hill. Operations are good. The different characters that they have in the station of like the different mice. Had Dizzy. Yeah. Had Maisie. I think so. Yeah. So, a lot of fun. It, it, it's a good fit here. It, it works. This open area right here used to have yellow track swizzing back and forth. And now, there's nothing. Check this out. Now that is an impressive building. I love the design that they went with. The white with the blue. So right when you walk in, this is where you can choose your food items. There's two sides open, but only one is operating at the moment. First thing you see is some key lime pie right here. Some bread. Turkey breast. Pork tenderloin. It all gets served on newspaper. That's actually a really cool touch. There's the fish. Getting the shrimp looks really good. The chicken tenders also look awesome. There's the fries. And then you can also choose from potatoes or I'm getting the tropical fried rice. Looks fantastic. And where better place to eat it than on top of the Grand Pavilion with this view. That is awesome. 
And you can see the wild mouse right there too. When I was at Cedar Point, like once you were in the park, I, I never really like, felt like I was at a, a beach park even though you are. So this like connects the park to the beach much better. It's really the only area in the park where you can actually like take in the fact that there's a beach right well, here. Before you couldn't at all. I, at least I didn't think so. Like, you have to exit everything. the park. Yeah. Alright, so Grand Pavilion food review. The shrimp was definitely fried in the same batter that they use for funnel cakes That's and good. yeah, you could taste it. Like it's it was funnel cake shrimp. Funnel cake shrimp. It was very interesting. It was good though. I, I liked it a lot. The rice was a little better than like Panda Express rice. Um, there were like chunks of pineapple in it though and that made that pretty good and, and the roll was fine. I went to throw my food away and there's literally like street performers down here doing like cool drumming and I don't even know what that is. In addition to outdoor seating, you can also sit on these really comfy chairs and they have like full couches. That's sweet. I seriously don't know anywhere else in the park that you can do that. There's actually a second restaurant on the second floor that has different offerings than downstairs. However, it is not included on your meal plan, which sucks because they have really good looking chicken wings down here and whatnot. So they're going to have to just pay for those out of pocket. One thing you can do if you don't want any of the meats is you can get three sides. So I got like a cucumber thing. These are potatoes that they smother in butter. I got pasta salad and I got Tim. He got a salad. salad. What'd you get? You got rice, right? Got rice. What do you think? You've eaten here before, right? Yes. And? It's it's really good. The, the serving sizes can be hit or miss, but the food is really good. I was gonna say, these are like really big portions. Like, I don't know if I can eat this many cucumbers. I guess uh, we'll see. In case you're unfamiliar, there used to be a grand pavilion here at Cedar Point. I think that's what it used to look like. You can see all the old timey photos or maybe drawings back in the day, yeah, I'm gonna go with definitely drawings. Got a really nice new bar here. It looks like it's supposed to be roller coaster drop back there. And it looks awesome. They've got a whole bunch of signature cocktails. They got this one that says it was introduced in 1894 and it was originally served at the original Grand Pavilion. So I'm like looking at this menu and like all the cocktails are definitely like on the expensive side. Okay, fine. Then I'm looking at the beers and I'm like, oh my gosh, those are expensive beers. And then I'm looking at these frozen cocktails. We're talking, I understand they come in a souvenir glass. You don't have a choice to not do the souvenir glass from what I was seeing. We're talking 20, what, that's gonna be after like tip and everything, like a $27 drink. That's crazy. Yeah, and if you don't want alcohol, it doesn't even change the price that much. What? Yeah, we made it to the far side. So we have one more boardwalk sign, this one with the wild mouse in the background. This one I think definitely looks a lot better. I mean, this is just like, this is the shot, right? Like just a great placement with the coaster in the backdrop. And then that brings you over to Windseeker. This building over here. And then uh, some of the rides over in Plant Snoopy. So that's gonna conclude the portion of this video covering the boardwalk. Uh, overall, pretty impressive this area. It is a huge refresh over what it used to be. Yeah, it's just very colorful. I think that does a lot yes. for an area. It's just bringing a lot of color. I mean, just like sugar I know. I don't know, the colors all work really well together and I'm a big sucker for like nice color schemes. This land actually has personality where before there was just nothing to it. Like you didn't even want to really be in this area. Like, I never came over here except to ride Wicked Twister. Do you miss Wicked Twister? Like is it okay this all being here with Wicked Twister being gone? Like is that a fair trade-off? I wasn't as devastated as other people were about Wicked Twister. Neither anyway, was I. So I didn't I, even ride it every visit. Maybe it was like every other visit. Like it was cool. Yeah. But like it exists in other places. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that... If there was like the last of its kind, I'd be more like, oh no! Yeah, uh, it, it'll be sad seeing the spikes missing from the skyline, but something That's tells me uh, we'll get a replacement for that spike in the skyline pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk about Matterhorn and Scrambler without talking about their old location. So they added some seating areas for where Scrambler was, and then up here is where Matterhorn was, and there's not really anything. It's pretty much just empty. So maybe room for something else in the future? I mean, this area in particular is very like open and grassy, which is very scenic and pretty, but I mean, let's be real, you could fit like a decent sized ride over here. And now the elephant in the room, Top Thrill Dragster. Well, this is what it looks like. Yeah, the Top Thrill Dragster is, is no more. This is, this is all you got. So you can see the entrance sign was right there. It's just a bunch of work walls. So it will be reimagined in 2024 with a new formula for thrills. That's the quote they said. 
But yeah, so you can see the work walls even extend around the bleachers over here, just all the way down this pathway. That's crazy. This is so weird to see. Right here, you can see where the track just ends. Man. You can see that obviously the uh, station roof is still here, but all the concrete, all the track, everything that is in this vicinity is gone. It's literally just this. If you look right back there, you can see uh, that's where the photos used to be, and it's a little overgrown now. Yeah. All the TVs are covered with plastic bags. So there you can see the supports that are left over, and then you can see the pad for where the station was. Again, it's literally just this roof structure, and that's it. So in theory, this new station will be here, but I'm sure they're gonna have to make some serious modifications for what's coming next. To the average viewer, you just see, you know, grass, rocks, and water, a very nice little view. But to the keen eye of an enthusiast, you see three freaking massive footers for what is likely to be the back half of Topsville Spicer. It is in a perfect triangle, right here in the center of Iron Dragon. That looks cool. Yeah, oh my gosh. I cannot believe how close you can get to them from the line of this roller coaster. So in order to make room for these things, they actually had to remove a section of track here at Iron Dragon. So this thing had a delayed opening, but now it is operational. So you can just get really, really good views of these footers. That is a huge change here. Like, again, it doesn't look like much right now, but come next year, we're gonna be looking all the way up there. And it's gonna be crazy. Going up those lift hills, you got perfect views of that entire stadium area. You can see how much concrete they ripped up. You can also see more footers that we couldn't get on camera, but they line up perfectly from that triangle and like where that launch track is. It's like two behind where the former station was. Over by Millennium Force's turn, we have the Millennium Lounge VIP experience. It's $40. You get access to shaded seating, Phone chargers, that's nice. TVs, complimentary snacks, and flavor-infused water. Would you pay $40 to do that? Wait, really? Are you actually asking? I wouldn't, no. No, I, I mean, you could go over to the pavilion and they have like a like an indoor area, and they got a bunch of chairs, they got a bar, like yeah, there's no like free snacks, but that's like, not worth $40. I just can't imagine that this will do super well. I feel like there's not an audience for it. So this right here was the entrance of Forbidden Frontier, and now is the entrance to Frontier Fling. So you used to enter right through here, and you can see it's closed off. So Millennium Island is no longer accessible, which means no views and no role-playing experience here at Cedar Point. So I guess it just wasn't popular. Kings of May removed their Chick-fil-A for the 2023 season, and so did Cedar Point. Frontier Inn is back in this location, serving handcrafted burgers, pizza, and chicken. This is the inside. Definitely not as impressive as the nearby farmhouse, but that's okay. You can see how they kind of reskinned it from the old Chick-fil-A. Various theming up against the walls. Subtle, but still looks nice. The Frontier Favorites is what's on the dining plan with the in and out quick platters. So the entree choices are a Trailblazer cheeseburger. You have a Bratwurst burger, what the heck is that? French bread pizza and thick cut fries and onion rings or half fries and half onion rings, whoa. So here's our chicken. We have two different dipping sauces. So this is bourbon, then this is hot honey. Then the onion rings are pretty good. Fries are steak fries. There's a look at our burger. Overall, I think this is a huge miss. It, it's not that good. Like I like the bourbon sauce a lot. The bourbon sauce is good. The onion rings are, are, are good, but the burger is cold, not good flavor. The chicken the is not fresh. It's okay. I have a brat burger because they're delicious. Okay, so that's like the thing to get here then. Okay. It's really good. I literally watched them pull like a fresh thing of chicken and that's what we're eating and it doesn't taste fresh at all. So, I don't know. I I personally say this is a downgrade from Chick-fil-A for sure. If you're coming to this like area. It. Yeah, it looks like Chick-fil-A. It doesn't taste like anywhere near as good. If you're coming to this area, eat at the farmhouse next door instead. It's literally like right there. Can't talk about what's new at Cedar Point without talking about the new merch. So there's this design. They're saying 
This is my Cedar Point shirt. That's a big thing they're doing. And then they have like this big like graphic designs for like the different rides here, such as Millennium Force. And then here's another one, just a different take on it, very all over the place and stylistic. And then Rock and Roller Coast. Yeah, it's a lot. This one's fun. Look at this, just like in the corner right there. Oh yeah, here's That's the shield on this one. On the other side. Oh, I see. That's the Interesting. So what's on the back of this one? Oh. Oh wow. A lot. Look how simplistic this is. It's literally just Cedar Point, Sandusky, Ohio. It's like how minimalist can get. I mean, honestly, these I like, like it. Yeah, it's, um, it's not bad. I think flat. these are supposed to look like the Ohio State logo. I could be wrong. Oh. I think. That's, what, that's what it looks like, yeah. I see like, it, yeah. The generic college logo. Yeah. yeah. This is kind of fun. This isn't bad at all. I actually like that one. Over at Steel Vengeance, unless I'm losing my mind, they raised the prices on the lockers and it's now $3 for one time use. Usually it's two. So. We are not made of money. I know, they're getting greedy, <laughs> is what I'm hearing. That does it for all the different changes around Cedar Point this year. Park is now closed, so we're on our way up. But overall, the park looks fantastic. I mean, it really does. Every year they make a lot of subtle changes, stuff that you might not even notice unless you come here year after year. But, but subtle changes make a lot of difference. Yes. You know, it's usually the areas that you wouldn't think about that when they're spruced up, they make some big difference. So yeah. I think they're doing the right thing. Most of the attention on the park was put towards the front. Uh, you know, we're leaving Frontier Town right now. It looks about the same as last year, but last year it did get a huge like spruce up. So, yeah. and it's still, they are maintaining it. That's the big thing is like it, you know, you add all these things, but you have to keep it looking good. And so um, they've absolutely done that. Obviously next year, they're gonna be very focused on Dragster. But, uh, That'll be know. a big thing, yeah. I guess we'll have to follow along over the next year because now that the park is like, you know, in the swing for summer, they're gonna start to probably sprinkle hints here and there until right, they finally make an announcement. I imagine that we're gonna see a lot of work done with different footers, uh, some of the supports and everything, and uh, what, also what theme they choose. So it's space, all- Space, give me space. I like it. So if you've been to Cedar Point yet this year, let us know what you think of all of these changes. If you're coming to the park later this year, then keep an eye out for all the different things that we've highlighted in this video. And let us know what you want to see at Cedar Point in the future. So thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time.